Lush forests, deep caves, and dry dunes make up the planet known as the Far Far Range. But stranger than the variance in geography is the host of creatures that call this place home. Hi, I'm Rockcan, and today we're going to be exploring the world of Slime Rancher. We'll be going through the Far Far Range, looking at the distinct ecological zones, and exploring the many types of slimes that roam the planet. The Far Far Range is located 1,000 light years away from Earth. When it was first discovered, it was found to be home to several species of slimes, which produce plorts when fed. Plorts were discovered to have great value, with many applications from use as household cleaners, to rocket fuel, to fertilizer. And so naturally, we began to farm them. To get to the Far Far Range, I first need to take a year-long journey on a spaceship. Luckily for me, the 7Z Corporation has sponsored this research trip. Waking up on the ranch, the first place to explore is the Dry Reef. Once a thriving underwater ecosystem, it now sits above the waterline. It's an arid land, with sparse trees and tall cliffs. As the wind sweeps across the ground, we can see the first species of slime pop out of a coral tube, the pink slime. Pink slimes are the most abundant slime on the far, far range. Capable of eating anything, they've evolved to thrive in every environment. As the most common slime, their plorts are used in many general purpose applications, from food products to household cleaners. Due to their abundance though, their plorts aren't worth much on the market. Traveling farther past the coral columns, we'll find the tabby slime. The first feline slime we encounter, the tabby is a friendly and playful one, much like house cats on Earth. They are quite common, living in most biomes of the far, far range and hunting for meat. Their plorts are used back on Earth as a stimulant, giving the consumer a surge of the slime's energy. Walking out into this great clearing, we'll spot another new slime rolling about, the rock slime. Rock slimes are covered in a protective crown of rocks, which they use as a form of defense. When agitated, they can roll themselves into a ball and attack, often fighting over veggies. Rock plorts are used in the production of blue metal, a high strength and lightweight alloy used in spaceships and prosthetic limbs. To encounter the next slime of the dry reef, we'll have to wait around for nighttime. As the moonlight begins to shine down on the coral crusted ground, a new slime emerges from its home, the phosphor slime. These slimes can be found everywhere on the far, far range, but will disappear when the sun comes out again. Phosphor slimes have wings, allowing them to fly and glide in the air while they search for fruit to eat. Both the slimes and their plorts naturally glow, and their plorts are used as an eco-friendly form of light across many cities. Tabby, rock, and phosphor plorts are all quite useful, giving them an okay market value back on Earth. While exploring the dry reef, you'll come across massive slimes known as gordos. These gelatinous giants are a rare phenomenon which happens when many slimes of the same type group together. The slimes will merge, forming a gordo where they stand. These huge slimes are unable to move, and when they've been fed enough, they'll explode back into the slimes that they're made of. Most often, something has attracted the slimes to congregate and form a gordo. And when it's popped, we'll be able to figure out what that was, like this key, or perhaps a teleporter. This teleporter will bring us to Ring Island, another area of the dry reef, which is home to the puddle slime. Millions of years ago, slime life began in the water, but today only one species of freshwater slime continues to splash across the far, far range. Puddle slimes are often found in small ponds, and instead of eating food, they absorb water into their bodies. Their plorts contain an incredible hydro compound, which is used in some very expensive luxury bottled water. Now let's go grab that kiwi found earlier 
and head through this cave. As the air gets cooler, we'll find ourselves walking into the crystalline caverns of the Indigo Quarry. The Indigo Quarry is a winding network of caves and cliffs. Once the site of a mining project, this deep blue biome houses giant crystal structures. The Great Caves are home to some familiar slimes, but from the groups of pink and rock slimes, an explosion rings out and introduces us to the Boom Slime. The Boom Slime crackles with energy and is constantly exploding. Be careful of how close you are to these slimes, as their explosions will hurt. They fuel themselves by eating meat, and their ports contain the same explosive properties that the slime has, making them quite valuable for rocket fuel and medical research. Walking through the abandoned mine shafts, we'll discover a slime emitting a radioactive glow. The rad slime is a peculiar one, charged with an aura of radiation. Their aura seems to have no effect on other slimes or the veggies that they chase down to eat, but it is dangerous to you if you stand too close for too long. Charged with the same energy as the slime, their plorts are used in the production of supercharged batteries. While exploring the many crystal-filled caves of the Indigo Quarry, don't be too alarmed if a crystal or two jump out at you. The crystal slime is an uncommon slime found only in select caves of the biome. A relative of the rock slime, it's covered in sharp crystal spikes and is capable of performing the same rolling attacks. This slime will leave behind patches of crystal, which pose a danger to you even after the slime itself has settled down. Their plorts contain a pure form of these crystals, and are highly valued for the construction of clear metal. Just like the dry reef, there are a number of gordo slimes which have formed here. Now let's head into the lush forests of the moss blanket. From towering trees to mossy rocks, this emerald expanse houses a wonderful ecosystem. When traveling through the flowering fields, a new type of slime will emerge to greet you. The honey slime is found throughout the moss blanket and has a unique honeycomb crest on its head. The slimes themselves are made of a super sweet slime compound, believed to be caused by the high amount of natural sugars from the fruit and floral nectars of their home. Their plorts are also super sweet, often used in cooking and in making sugar substitutes. While tabby slimes love to lounge in the tall grass of the moss blanket, we can head deeper into the forest to find another feline slime. The hunter slime is a well-adapted hunter, using its ability to turn invisible while it stalks its prey. These slimes are hard to spot, but you'll be sure to notice them once they've leapt on you for a bite. Their plorts carry the same ability, and are used to create a serum that can temporarily make you invisible. Once again, we'll find some gordos hidden around this great forest. Continuing the exploration, let's head out of the moss blanket. Here we'll find a courtyard, filled with statues and a giant door. I did get confused here for a minute, but after a few letters back and forth with Hobson, the previous owner of my ranch, I was able to figure out that these ancient statues are connected to the slimes. After gathering some plorts and placing them into the statues, the giant door began to light up, and eventually began to fall. As the great door opens, we catch a glimpse of the ruins beyond. The ancient ruins are the remnants of an ancient civilization, but whether it was made by humans, sentient slimes, or something else still remains a mystery. Ancient technology powers this place, with mysterious doors and lights illuminating the crumbled halls. As confusing as the ruins itself are the quantum slimes. These slimes are likely the result of something that happened in the ruins, as they're charged with a strange energy. The quantum slimes emit ghosts of themselves, remnants of other realities that on occasion come true, resulting in the slime teleporting to its new location. 
Their plorts are currently being studied in the hopes of unlocking new technologies, like infinite energy and cloning. While walking through the ancient structures, we'll also stumble upon echoes. These strange wisps of light serve as good luck charms, and are believed to have originated from the same event that created the quantum slime. While exploring, we can see that Gordos have also formed here in the ruins. As we reach the end, there's a strange building, with a glowing platform in the middle. Seeing the same statues from before, I began to place the quantum plorts, when suddenly the room lit up, and a huge teleporter appeared. Like a true explorer, I knew I had to see what was on the other side, and stepped into the unknown. That's all for this video, but there's still a ton more to explore, so be sure to get subscribed for part 2. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and I'll see you in another one. Thanks for watching.